12 News is your local election headquarters. Now we continue our Where They Stand series in WPRI.com. I'm Ray Bakari. Joining us today is Massachusetts State Rep Jim Hawkins from Atterboro. And this edition will focus on a question in the ballot in that state, uh, specifically question number two. The question would essentially eliminate passing the MCAS exam from being part of the requirement to graduate from a Massachusetts public high school. Um, Rep, it's great to have you on. Oh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. This is a very timely and important issue. Um, grateful for your your interest. And thank you for giving us your time for this. So to put it simply, the question, if approved by voters, would eliminate the requirement that students in a Massachusetts public high school would need to pass the MCAS exam yes. in order to graduate. Can you explain for those watching uh, how this question made its way to the ballot and some of the context? Well, it was it was also in the, uh, the Thrive Act that I filed this year, but the Thrive Act legislation takes more than one session. So MTA took it upon themselves to do this as a ballot question since that's the part that was most popular about the Thrive Act was changing the graduation requirement and it's proved to be very popular with voters. Uh, I think the mis misunderstanding is that people think that there's now no graduation requirement. I graduated the old school way based on what I did over 12 years in, in public schools, not what happened on one test. And in this case, the MCAS is um, not a very good measure of student achievement. For some students it is, but not for every student. Uh, some students don't take a test that long. I was a 10th grade math teacher before I ran for office, so I actually was responsible for the math portion of the M MCAS. And at that point it was three hours on Monday, three hours on Tuesday, and two hours on Wednesday. And these are 15 year olds, adults can't take a test that long. And some do fine, but some struggle, not because they don't know the math, but because they struggle with a test that long. Uh, Part of the requirements to be a teacher with a state is you take a course on assessment as part of the pedagogy portion, which is the teaching skills rather than the content skills. Um, and they teach us that a multiple choice test is the worst possible measure of student achievement. And that's what MCAS is based on. So it shouldn't be a graduation requirement. It, it, sh it may be, a, we, do need, we do need a graduation requirement and there's still gonna be one if this passes. And we, <coughs> excuse me, we do need a standardized test, and there would still be a standardized test. MCAS would still happen. So, if this question were to pass, <coughs> if this question were to pass next month, what kind of changes, whether good or bad, would come about? Not many. The MCAS would still be administered, uh, and students who are graduating this this year, spring of 2025, class of 2025, uh, could still graduate even if they hadn't passed the MCAS. But what happens to them now, if they take this test, the math and the ELA and the science, and they don't pass one of those before they graduate, now they're in 10th grade. And if you think about this, they've taken the same content area, K through eight, maybe in, in seventh and eighth grade, there's, there's advanced and regular classes. And then when they get to high school, they've got to take all the prerequisites. And the courses that they might be there for would be in junior and senior years when they might take more music classes or maybe carpentry classes or something like that. If they don't pass MCAS, the junior and senior years are going to be committed to taking remedial courses so they can pass the test. It doesn't help students. And the results are just coming out now in October from last year. So if I'm the teacher last year of this student, it's not going to help me adjust my, my teaching to the student because it doesn't come out while I have that student. It's this year. And I, I think one of the things that I'm reading most recently in the paper is that uh, scores dropped in the, in the administration from 2024. And people are trying to figure out why MCAS doesn't tell you that. It just gives you raw data. So there is a better way to do, to do the uh, standardized testing. Uh, Attleboro is one of eight schools in MCIEA, which is Massachusetts Consortium for Innovative Education Assessment. I think I said that right. Uh, and it's a unique combination of people working on this. It's school, school committees and administrators and teacher unions designing a different way of doing standardized tests that happens. They're designing it in the classroom with real students and it would be a performance-based test, which would be group work and projects, which is how we teach now, so that's the same way we should be assessing. We no longer do chalk and talk, memorize stuff. We do group work and projects. That's the way teaching happens now in 2025. And it's the way the teach students should be, should be uh, should be evaluated. And it's also what students are going to do in the real world once they leave high school is they're going to have to work with other people. So this not only limits them to whatever is in the test, but allows them to show everything they know. Now all of a sudden this is way more helpful to a teacher trying to decide how to, uh, how to teach a student what his particular skills are. 
way more, uh, way more informative if you're going to compare me as a teacher to the teacher in the room next to me, or me as a, a, as a school district in Attleboro compared to a, a district next to me who may be doing it differently. It gives way more information about the differences between students, teachers, school districts, and tells you what you can do about it to improve. It's not just you've got to move up 10 points on the data. It tells you exactly what you can do. Now to get some of the other side, because there's uh, strong views both for and against this question, we'll have both for and against perspectives on WPRI.com. Good. And to preface it, you are a retired teacher who favors this, uh, favors yes. the passage of this question. Yes. But to get the critique real quick, one of them that I hear is that eliminating this requirement, one, lowers the standard when it comes to graduating from high schools and leaving it to district by district, and then the majority of, and then they also will say the majority of high schoolers pass this test on their first try. So how would you respond to those critiques? Well, and, and there were two things. One is it lowers the standards. It does not. The state frameworks that have to be ad adhered to in every content area, not just math, ELA, and science. So it doesn't lower the r standards in, in any way. Uh, what it does, what it does is it penalizes kids who might have an IEP or may just not sit well for eight hours of testing. The second, you got to remind me what the second part was. The other one was they bring up the point that majority of high schoolers typically pass the test on their first go around. Yes, and that happens in the very wealthy communities. Uh, if you want to compare school districts, you've got a very wealthy community where class, where, and, and compare it to a very uh, low-income community where classes may be double the size in the lower-income lower people. The kids may not have a place to sleep at night. They may be couch surfing. Much higher needs and not, not the same resources to support students. Um, and I, I, there's a difference. It's, for some reason, you never find the wealthy communities, wealthy uh, Wellesley, uh, Dover, Sherburn, Concord, Kyle, they never have trouble with MCAS. And there's a reason why. In, in lower, lower income school districts like Lawrence and New Bedford, yeah, they sometimes have a problem with MCAS. It's a much more challenging population. That's the difference. And we don't need to penalize kids who are in those school districts. What we do need to do is support them better. And it's simple. Smaller class sizes, more personal attention. That's the simple answer. And if we're not doing that, don't just whip them harder to, to hope they're going to suddenly do better. You need to offer more supports. And the question itself is getting quite the attention this election year. And there's a couple on the ballot in mass, but still sticking with the efforts around this and looking Thank ahead you. to next month's election. Um, you, I've noticed there's a couple of Congress people in the state, or the Commonwealth, I should say, that, had, that favor this question. Yes. You also did some recent canvassing with, uh, I believe, State Senator Feeney, yes. it was in yep. Attleboro. Yep. Um, so what are you hearing on the ground? Do you foresee this question passing? Yes. Uh, I found it to be very popular. Uh, and the people who have questions, like you just asked me, once I explain, they say, oh, I get it. We need, we need to change. We still need a graduation requirement. It doesn't mean it's a free-for-all, and we still need a standardized test. And at this point, the program I talked about is ready to use, but it hasn't been adopted, so MCAS still stands. It doesn't get rid of MCAS, and it doesn't get rid of the graduation requirement. I should ask, just to clarify for those watching at home, it, that once the MCAS requirement, if this passes and that's eliminated, does it go district by district to set their... No, no, there's still state standards as to what you have to do to graduate. And what are those, just to clarify? It's the things? frameworks. It's the frameworks class by class, what you have to have passed in order to graduate or to be advanced from year to year. And those are pretty strict. Uh, we don't get to make up our own curriculum. As a math teacher, I was almost uh, uh, regulated by the state to almost to what I did day by day. Uh, there's there's no, no wiggle room on how the courses are taught now. Final question, looking ahead, say next month, uh, November 5th, the election comes and we find out the question passes. When, does, when will it take effect? Uh, this academic year, it, it'll affect the uh, class of 2025 next spring. And what are, I guess, fun, uh, kind of the second part of that, what are some media changes folks will notice? Uh, well, more students will graduate, and, it, it, and they will be able to be more successful. I mean, we do everything for low-income students in, in community colleges, for vocational trades, and without a, gra without a high school diploma, they're at a significant disadvantage. Uh, if you want to go into the trades and, and get a union job where you will make eighty or ninety thousand dollars a year with benefits, you're at a disadvantage if you don't have a high school diploma. And if you want to go to community college or any place else and you don't have that diploma, you may have gotten all A's in 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 the classroom, but without that diploma, you have a hard time making the next step. That's all the questions I had, Rep. I want to thank you so much for giving your time for this. We appreciate having you here. Oh, thank you for inviting. This is an important topic. And thank you for tuning in to this edition of Where They Stand on WPRI.com. Remember, 12 News is your local election headquarters. We have other interviews related to local elections this cycle and a full voter guide available on WPRI.com. For now, Ray Bakari, 12 News.